Hello. It's, uh, me. This is a quick video on how to get this Starfield background in Blender 2.8. Either with these gaseous nebula or just the plain Starfield. So, I'm in Blender 2.8, uh, the July 20 build. I'm going to create a new scene in Blender and then um, get rid of the default cube. So that we're all on the same page, I am using the EV rendering engine. So we're going to be using the node graph or the shader uh, editor as they've renamed it in Blender 2.8. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my timeline panel at the bottom because we're not going to use that at the moment to the shader editor. Um, and I'm going to assume that you might not be familiar with the shader editor, so bear with me if you know what's going on. In the top left hand corner there is a drop down menu with object world and line style. Object deals with the materials of any specific objects that we have selected. We don't have anything selected so we don't have any materials on them. And then world deals with this kind of background expanse, the, the, the default background of the scene. So I'm going to go over into world and right now we have two nodes. A node is just a calculation or some sort of input uh, and in this case the input is a color and they've given you the option to have a default color without any input. Colors are generally yellow. Uh, these yellow dots indicate that it wants to accept a color. The gray dot indicates that this node wants to accept a uh, single value, a number. And then the green dot is a shader. So in this case, the background node takes in a color and a strength of that color and then outputs a shader, which we connect to the surface input of the world output node. So in this case, if we click on sh uh, color, we can start messing around with the background color of the scene. Nothing's happening at the moment because to view the output of what we're seeing, we actually need to be in rendered mode. So there's two ways to go about that. Either in the top right hand corner of your 3D viewport, you can click rendered mode under viewport shading or press Z and then scroll up to rendered. So now that I'm in rendered mode, I can click on the color of my background and I can see immediate feedback of how I'm changing the background color which is pretty awesome so if you just wanted a sort of plain deep purple background this is how you can achieve that however we want a starfield background so we're going to have to do a little bit more than just that I'm gonna set it uh, the color is black for now um, to get the starfield effect we're going to use a noise node. Now to add nodes to the scene, we'll press shift A, just like you would add geometry. And then you can either scroll through this menu and look for what you want, or by pressing S, um, you open up the search menu and then you can just type in the node that you're looking for. In my case, I'm looking for noise. So a noise texture. Uh, and you'll notice that noise outputs two things, um, a color value and a factor value. So if you connect color value to the color input on the background, suddenly we have a pretty trippy rainbow noise background, which is fine. Um, we could also remove that and then move factor into strength. So gray to gray. Uh, in this case, we'd have to change color to something other than black. And then we could see the strength of this white color is now affected by the noise value. Um, we could also move color into strength and factor into color and Blender will automatically translate a single number value into a color value. So that's all well and good and uh, this noise texture is pretty pretty handy. Um, I'm just going to turn off the gizmo so that we can see the background. So in uh, some cases, and I'll cover this in a future video, we um, will pay attention to the vector node of this noise input, um, which will determine how that noise is being uh, mapped onto the scene. 
for now we uh, it looks like it's wrapping pretty nicely onto this world so we're not going to worry too much about the vector so we'll only deal with scale detail and distortion today the scale of the node counterintuitively as you increase the scale the size of the noise or the, the apparent size of the noise gets smaller so it gets becomes more granular so that's just something to be aware of for our star field we're going to pump it up way up into the hundreds for now though just to demonstrate I'll choose a scale the default scale of 5 uh, so under detail you'll notice that actually if we go down to the scale of 1 the um, the noise is pretty smooth right we there's a smooth gradient between the lighter values and the darker values detail just means that we add extra granularity in there while still maintaining the overall gradient so from light areas to dark areas but increasing detail it adds a little bit of extra granularity you probably can't see that super well right now so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a another node in between the noise and the background to give us a little bit more control over how noise is mapping onto background this node is called a color ramp so color ramp oh look at that it, if you I'll just do that again when you add nodes if you're adding a relevant node uh, you can hover over the, the connecting line um, and it'll automatically insert it into that connection uh, if you don't hover over the line oh dear where did that go um, you'll have to manually make that connection color ramp takes in a uh, factor so a number and then maps that number from 0 to 1 onto this color gradient so by default 0 to 1 is a linear black to white so it creates absolutely no change we can change the type of interpolation though to something like ease and this will make the dark areas a little darker and the bright areas a little brighter we can also start moving the well the clip values on either side so if we wanted the darker areas to be really dark to be really dark we can start moving the black the clipping um, point of the black value a little bit further up and now we've got this really deep rich dark area over there and we can do the same with white and we'll have white lighter areas that kind of pop a little bit more so with that done I can show you what the detail does uh, so in this case we've got a pretty smooth gradient from the light area to the dark area but as we increase detail we've still got a generally light area there and it's a generally dark area over here uh, but it seems to just have a little bit more extra stuff to it extra well detail and then finally the distortion adds a little bit of funky distortion to the scene um, that should be kind of obvious by the name the noise node is very useful in many different ways uh, in terms of our star field today we're gonna keep the distortion at zero detail doesn't really matter too much we'll keep it at two and then the scale will pump all the way up to 500 actually no 300 and with our color ramp node from earlier if we increase the black clip all the way up to about 75% then we start to get the look of a star field we, right now what's happening is that the stars uh, I'm going to change the scale back to 5 to demonstrate or 10 to demonstrate what's happening here uh, so this is an individual star for example um, and with this gradient over here you can see the star kind of eases in to the lighter area if we pull the white clip value further down then the star becomes a little bit more definite so that's what's happening if we zoom all the way out to a scale of 300 uh, if we drag the white to its original value of 1 uh, we have a kind of soft star field and then if we pull the white a little bit further in the stars become a little bit more defined and they they pop a little bit more so that's a stylistic decision which is up to you right so that's our star field uh, this is the most basic iteration of it if this is all that you need feel free to I'll leave right now okay so we have our simple star field 
Uh, and what I want to do now is create a nebulous background, as if there was some sort of gas cloud. Um, and I'm going to use noise, color ramp, and background again, but just with a little bit of a different setting. So I can shift select all of these nodes and shift D to duplicate and drag it down a little bit. So I know that my star field looks good and I don't really want to interfere with that right now. So I'm going to pull that node out of the world output and pull the uh, nodes that I just duplicated in. So this way I'm not going to be changing or affecting the top nodes. Uh, there's little arrows at the top left of each node that you can click to collapse that node. Right, so for the gaseous nebula, I don't want these tiny little points. I want large globs of uh, noise, in which case I'm going to move this down, scale it back down to probably five um, and pull the clip a little bit further down. So we can start to see what this gas cloud might look like. Uh, it's not perfect yet. So we can play around with the color with the values a little bit. The first thing I want to do is increase the detail, which will soften up the edges a little bit, which is quite nice. And then change the brightest point from a white color to something a little bit more gaseous. So something like orange, right? Full brightness is probably too much. So I'll pull this down just to create a sort of subtle effect in the background. That's probably still a little too much, but it's a good place to start. So once we layer in the star field background, which we can do by adding, so shift A and then searching for an add shader node. So the add shader node will take one shader and add it on top of another shader. And then if we move that into the surface, wait for it to process. Now we've got our gaseous clouds being added onto our star field. All right, and now we can start looking at what this is actually going to look like when it's together. All right, that doesn't actually look too bad. I do want to add another color in here though, because just the orange is a little bit boring. So once again, I'm going to copy all of these nodes, shift D for duplicate. Now, instead of adding these together by creating another background node, I'm gonna show you a different way to add things together, which is, so I'll delete this background node. In, in the case of the uh, star field and the clouds, we added the two shaders together, right? But in this case, what I'm going to do is add these two color outputs together. So if I shift A and then search for this one's called this one isn't called add, it's called mix, mix RGB, mix RGB. If we take in these two colors and then add them into the background node. Right now, it isn't really going to show much because these are both exactly the same. So if we play around with the setting a little bit and change the orange here to blue and if I scale it up a little bit now we've got these two different noise profiles uh, layered on top of each other so the default mix mode is called mix which blends the two together if the factor is zero then the top input will come through fully and then if the factor is one the bottom input will come through fully and if it's half it kind of blends between them uh, what I want though is add so what add will do is add the bottom onto the top. So at full zero, we only see the top. And then at full one, we see both of them equally. All right, so this is just a different way of adding things together. You can add two shaders together, and then you can add two colors together using the add, uh, mix color and then shader with the add. So that's okay. In this case, I might want to pull the blue down a little bit and then add some distortion to the blue, maybe. Yeah, why not? Uh, and overall, the gaseous cloud is probably a little bit too strong. So I'll pull the strength of the shader down a little, just so that it's this nice little subtle addition. Right, so 
I think we're done here. There's plenty more that you can do. Uh, you can layer in a bunch more uh, noise textures. You can multiply noise textures together to get uh, less uniform distributions throughout. But for now, this is supposed to just be a basic intro. So I'll leave it there. I hope you got out of this what you needed. And until next time, cheerio.